How was the transition from activism or community organizing to electoral work? And what did you like or find difficult about that transition? I was an organizer, so I was a team mother. So by the time I was 19, I had three kids. And when it was time for those kids to go to school, my mother said, you get on the PTA, you get on the LFT. And I was like, nope, I'm not gonna do that. Don't wanna be you. And my mother was a clerk at the school. And so it's already bad when your mother works at your school. <laughs> and then to become pregnant while you're leaving school is just like, it's a don't do. And so for years I had organized at my school. I didn't call it organizing. I thought it was just getting a few mothers together, raise a little sand, when we didn't get what we needed at the school. And so um, I found an organization that allowed me to act up like I would quite often do. And so I always tell the story of before I got to City Hall, I cussed out half my coworkers already because I was an organizer and I didn't believe in the work that they were doing. And so for me, um, it got down to the Obama Presidential Center. We had went on a 34 day hunger strike for to save Dyer High School was the last open enrollment high school in our community. And I was on for 30 days. After 30 days, my first grandchild was born. And I was just like, the mayor let us die. He, he does not care. He just was gonna let us die. He would continue to let us be on a hunger strike. And once the school got saved, it didn't feel like a victory to me. It just didn't. We wanted to be a global leadership in green technology, and they made it an art school. And it was like, our kids could draw. They could beat drums. They don't, they, that's not the type of school that they needed. But I also saw the ugly beast Chicago could be. And so I always tell the story of, we had planned to sleep outside at Diet, and we wind up having to go into Rainbow Push, which was the only church that would allow us to sleep because they start to take pictures of us. They sent people to fight with us. They would go a few feet from us and barbecue and eat. It just had gotten really bad, yes. It was bad. People do not know the horrible stories. And then after you, you're not eating, you get this clarity, but you mean as ever. <laughs> you are. People started, you know how in the cartoons, when they started and they started like hot dogs and hamburgers? I was feeling that and I would cry every day because the Little Village hunger strike, that, that diet high sh hunger strike would not have happened without the Little Village. And so for me, I was like, they did 19 days, oh, we can knock out 19 days. I passed out on the 10th day at a CPS board meeting and they asked to roll me out of there. Now I don't remember anything of the day. All I remember is seeing pictures of my legs open, my skirt just flowing everywhere. It was really bad. And so after that victory, they announced the Obama Presidential Center was coming to Woodlawn. I had just been displaced from Bronzeville, and I was now in Woodlawn, and I was just like, I can't do it no more. I can't take it no more, because we can protest, we can go on hunger strikes, we can block elevator doors, we can block the streets. I have been banned from City Hall so many times. <laughs> but that was not enough. We have to be at the table to change uh, policy and legislation. And so I was just like, I was gonna run. And I always tell the story of, I never thought I would win. I got in that race to push the conversation way to the left. And I just happened to be the person at the end to get to the left, so. <laughs> a lot of people here are from out of state or out of the country. So um, a lot of folks might not know what a uh, LSC is. Could you okay. explain that? So LSC is a local school council. And it's the largest elected body in the United States. We work for free. We're elected by the people. We keep those offices every two years. So I have been on since I was 19. I am 44. Because every time my child was in a school, I felt it was my duty to be responsible for about what happens in these school buildings. And we all know that they make local school councils a sham in Chicago. They say the reason why they don't want an elected school board is because we got LSEs. But you defund them and disorganize them. There are seven LSC facilitators in the whole city for all of these folks. Seven. I happen to be one because I went and got the training. A lot of uh, longtime machine politicians w were replaced by progressives and socialists. And I'm wondering uh, what you think the reasons are that your campaigns were successful um, this time around. And uh, mm -hmm. so basically, why did you win? The people are why we historically aldermen do not get out, get their butts out in the streets and knock doors. 
I think I'm the candidate that probably lost the most weight because I was out <laughs> on a consistent basis every day. Even when I didn't want to, the two young ladies down here, they are two humble little sisters, but believe you me, if they can get out in the cold, and knock doors when they could be getting their nails done, they could be hanging out, they could be doing whatever they want to do. And if they got up and knocked doors, I was going to knock doors with them. This campaign was especially hard for me because I lost my mother in the middle of the campaign. And so my mother knew, she knew <coughs> that I was going to win. People saw that win for me even before I saw it. And it was because I was humble enough to know that I'm no different than the people that I want to represent. And I didn't go to their doors acting like I knew what they needed. I went and asked. And so historically in black and brown communities, we're never asked. And over and over again, that's, what, that's all I heard was people say they are tired of people. And I said it during my campaign. You make $120,000 a year, you get a pension for the rest of your life, so do your job. And stop mistreating the very people that you are supposed to represent. They asked me to join the Black Caucus. I was like, nope. <laughs> and I know y'all confused. I said, the Black Caucus has not stood up for black people, so therefore I'm not joining. When you all have a black agenda for black Chicago, then I'll be feel free to get my $500 because they charge you to join. Ain't that something? The progressive caucus y'all laughing is $1,500. But I'm, yes, that's because they actually do fundraising. They give away scholarships. They do some good work. But I'm not going to join something just to go along and get along. I am the person that they didn't see coming in the election either. And so I had Robin which I knew Robin had worked on rent control. I had Shania and Lee. They got on my nerve, but I love them. But I, what I enjoyed about this election and me just winning to make it was I got to do it with some people that I respect and that I love and that push me. Those are the things that I enjoyed about the campaign and just being in a space where you're able to give the people in your community a voice is more than enough to humble anybody and it's more than enough that I'm grateful that I won because I know what's coming to my community. Uh, there's a lot of baggage too, like if in the 20th Ward, the previous alderman, uh, if you went and knocked on doors, you would meet a lot of people who's like, the last three aldermen went to jail, so why should I care about you? So, so embarrassed. So the last three aldermen of the 20th Ward have been to jail. So it's Cliff Kelly, it was Arena Troutman, and then Willie Cochran. And so people never ask me what I was qualified to do, what I ever did in my life. They don't know if I could organize my way out of a wet paper bag. All they asked was, how you going to stay out of jail? <laughs> and so my answer, of course, tickles everybody because I'm like, I'm a fat girl, P-H-A-T. I don't look good in orange. It ain't my color. <laughs> Their baloney has no first name. I like Oscar Mayer. That's not what they serving in jail. And number three, it's not enough to vote for me. You got to go to City Hall with me. And so I'm not making decisions based on what Jeanette thinks. I organize around what my community thinks. So one of the biggest institutions we have in our community is the University of Chicago. Boo. <laughs> they have a 70 year history of displacing black folks from out of their community. They just do. And so one of the things that they want to do is build past 61st. So they took in over half of High Park and the rest of Woodlawn. <laughs> so now what they historically would do is they'll say we have a community meeting, we have all the support. They go to the senior homes. They go to some school that's not out of state. And for the OPC, they even went to Ohio. Bust those people in and say, we got community support. Oh so at Jeanette's meeting, you got to show your ID that you live in the ward. And that's the only way you can vote. The community gets to decide everything from a liquor license to the little dollar lot of the store. The community gets to decide. I am the spokesperson. I am representing my ward. We do need checks and balances for some of these aldermen. We just do. How many times have you come home and been like, who in the hell decided this should be a one way? The aldermen. Mm -hmm. Without any community input whatsoever. And so if I, get the, if I have the right to vote you in, I should have the right to have a say so of what happens or does not happen in my community. 
I'm at, I'm probably, myself and Alderman Dow probably have more vacant lots than any community ever. I have over a thousand vacant lots. And I represent Woodlawn, Washington Park, Back of the Yards, Inglewood, New City, and some of Greater Grand Crossing. It's like they gave a kid a Crayola and let them draw. It's a huge war. That's the majority black and Latino. But you can tell years and years and years the bad aldermen have disinvested in this community. And so what I tell people is, how is it that we're six blocks away from Hat Park? They have everything. And in Woodline, we have absolutely nothing. That's not bad constituents. That's bad politicians who, have, who paid to play. And so I don't disagree with automatic prerogative. There has to be some checks and balances. You should not be making a decision without asking your constituents. So before I vote on something, it takes me time. And of course, I'm on the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning. Why? Because somebody wants to vent. Somebody wants to tell me a story. Somebody can't sleep, so they feel like they got to call me. <laughs> oh, and I give people my personal cell number. Why? Because you voted for me. You didn't vote for my staff. And they laugh, and Robin will tell you, Robin was like, I'm taking your number off this literature. And I'm like, don't do it. People need to be able to pick up that phone and say, look, lady, my light's out. And I can say, I can get on the phone. If they ain't on by a certain time, call me back. And what I will say about my community is they've been very respectful. I tell them, after 8 o'clock, unless you dead or on fire, please don't call. <laughs> Let me spend time with my family. But I'm grateful for the experience of being an alderman, but it's tough because we haven't been on a job a month. And I was told at a meeting, we voted you in, we'll vote you out. Lady, I just got here, I ain't, I've been. <laughs> and we all have been working since the day after election. I will say that about us. And we were working before election. Exactly. Non-stop. And before, when I, before I made it to the runoff, people were calling me, can I meet with you? I want to build. I'm like, you do realize I ain't won yet, right? You, you do realize I don't make any decisions. And my predecessor had to leave in March. And so March, up until I was sworn in on the 20th, my ward had no service. And so I was trying to figure out who to call. And that's another thing. For aldermen, there is not a handbook. There ain't a handbook. There ain't a CD-ROM. There ain't nothing. <laughs> they put you in a room with some commissioners and say, this is what we do, and they keep going. Am I? Stop me when I'm lying. <laughs> so if y'all wonder why in the first year, y'all like, my alderman is incompetent. It's because the city, the city hall is incompetent, too. They don't know. They have to put some better stuff in training. And please don't leave us. Don't let this be the last time that there's an interaction. The majority of our press assistants, they have made it extraly hard for us. Because now it's like we're picking up the pieces of our broken communities, because they are broke. I can't believe people ain't had the lawn next to them cut in 10 years. I can't believe they garbage ain't been picked up. I can't believe their lights been out for two years. Somebody lights been out for two years. Two years, and you looking like if the garbage ain't picked up at 10 o'clock, he come in at 10.05, I'm calling the city. That garbage is never picked up. And so we got our hands full. When Bernie Sanders ran, and that kind of created this opening to talk about socialism and, um, and fired up a lot of people, um, some of whom joined the Democratic Socialists of America. Um, and in Chicago, there are 2,000 members. Um, so I wanted to ask what you see the relationship between the socialist movement and socialist organizations as being with your campaign and um, whether that relationship has changed and where would you like to see that relationship go? I, I became a DSA member because of Robin. Because <laughs> um, what I said to DSA when I had my endorsement session is I don't really get into titles I get into right and wrong. And for me, folks who are not impacted by something but are willing to fight are all right with me. And so that's what DSA is to me. And so one of the things that I asked of DSA when I had my endorsement, I said, first of all, I need y'all to organize in the black community. We need to see more people from the black community in DSA. And two, I want you all, when, we're advocate, when DSA is advocating, to have the people who are actually impacted by the crap that goes on in the community. It makes the fight stronger and it makes it better. We are not going to win 
a world where it's okay for Ling and Shania, Shania to be who God made them to be and not apologizing for it if we all don't work together. Yes. It is not okay that we live in one of the richest cities in the world, not in the country, in the world, and we got people who actually sleep under the expressway. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like, and I said this on campaign, because I'm not embarrassed of who I am. It is a shame that in this rich country that I went to bed nights hungry because I had to feed my children, because I'm working 80 hours a week, because I live in a system that because of this, I am not respected. I knew Robin from rent control, and when it was asked for her to be um, on my campaign, they were like, what do you think of Robin? I like, I like Robin. She's <laughs> fighting for stuff that maybe don't affect her. She all right with me. And so when we sat down and had a conversation, we saw each other as the same. She didn't see herself any different from me. She was a tough cookie on me at times because she was concerned about me holding myself up in some of these forms. And she had never really seen me work a room. And so she was like, well, what you gonna say when they say you got five kids? I got five kids. I had three husbands. I get married again, a cat, and a partridge in a pet tree. I can care less. <laughs> I don't. That doesn't, my experience makes me who I am. And so I tell people, I can talk White House and Trap House. <laughs> you gotta be able to do both to work in this system. But I appreciate the work that DSA does and what they bring to the table because the machine is not dead. It ain't. It's trying to figure out how to recoup from they letting six people who just think the world is free get in the office. I y'all would not y'all would be surprised at how many people I didn't cuss out down there. They go. Hey, how you doing? They my best friend. They're concerned. <laughs> Want to know why? Because we got the community behind us. And they should be.